Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams and I'm the director of a company called Products for Peaceful Operations. Today I'm going to show you how to build a very quick, non-toxic bed bug trap using materials and items that you probably already have in your home. First I'm going to show you how to build a trap and then at the end of the video, please stay with me because I'm going to explain the science behind it. Okay, let's begin. Okay, first let's start with the formula. Now. What you're going to need to begin with is a quart of warm water. Warm water is important because you don't want to shock the yeast. We have a packet of active dry yeast and we have about a half cup of sugar. We have some adhesive tape. We have a magic marker, black or red, and a spoon. We have a deep bowl with tall sides and we have a container to keep the water once we have mixed it together. Now, I have gone ahead and written that out and I'm going to leave it there for a second so you can get the formula down and we have it in metric as well. Okay, so let's go and the we'll, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our water together. Okay, taking our container, we're going to put our sugar in first, we're going to add our dry active yeast, very important to check the expiration date, make sure it's in bounds, these things, the grocery stores like to keep these on their shelves much longer than they're good for, so be careful about that. One packet of yeast, one half cup of sugar, and then we're going to gently add warm, lukewarm water, a quarter of it. And it's important to be gentle. Those are live fungus spores that you're putting in there, and you don't want to shock them. You don't want to give them thermal shock. Mix all that up. Do a very good job at this. Don't scrimp on the mixing. Should look like a warm lemonade when you're finished. Okay. And then we're going to take a bowl that we have wrapped with adhesive tape along the sides. I've already taken the liberty of doing that. And we're simply going to pour that into the bowl. Now you don't want to overfill it. That's sufficient. And there you have it. A very quick, non-toxic bed bug detection device or trap. Now, please stay with me and I'm going to explain to you why that works. Okay, thank you for sticking with me. Um, the reason why I wanted to put the Demonstration first is I get a lot of complaints about people saying that oh the video could have took 10 minutes or less You know, I like to explain the science behind it because I find that uh, most people are uh, You can give them the demonstration, but they just really don't know why it works and unless they know the mechanics behind why it works They often won't go ahead and put this thing together in their home So I'm, I've taken the time to print out a sheet a photo of a bed bug under a micro microscope and very low uh, magnification but I think even with this magnification you can still see the very tips of the bed bugs feet I think you can see it here where my finger is and if if you will the they're like lobster claws they're, they're very much like a pincher action much like a crab uh, and that's how bed bugs gain purchase on your sheets. That's how they get climb up and down to you uh, to feed on you as a blood meal. Now the th important thing to know is that that physiological trait, that that trait of having those lobster claws, is an Achilles heel. It is their weakness. And because we know that, we know that bed bugs are not able 
to, they, they are really good at climbing up fabric and other porous subjects, uh, uh, sorry, uh, surfaces like wood, uh, paper, things like that, things that they can get their hooks into. But once they fall over the side of the bowl and come into and encounter the smooth area of the interior of the bowl, they are not able to get themselves out. Now what draws them to the bowl in the first place? Well, every mammal exhales carbon dioxide. If you, uh, carbon dioxide is just a natural byproduct of waste. When you inhale, your body, uh, your lungs disperse the oxygen that is in there and that the byproduct is carbon dioxide. Your breathing, that carbon dioxide, is like ringing a dinner bell to the bed bug. It tells them, hey, there's a blood meal nearby, let's go get it. And if, if they come to that source, they're going to climb up the side of the bowl they're going to get over the rim and they're going to fall in and they're not going to be able to get themselves out. More than likely, they're just going to spin around and drown. Now, for that reason, it's important to get your adhesive tape over the lip because a bed bug can't jump. So if you leave a gap in, in your bowl of the fabric between the lip and the bowl, they'll simply stop right there and then claw back down. So you have to entice them over the edge. So that's important. Another thing is a uh, recent scientist, a uh, recent survey, uh, study I should say, by uh, Flor the University of Florida and uh, Union College, uh, Dr. Corrine McNeil, I think is her name, she did a study on color and she found out that bed bugs prefer black and red. So those are their two favorite colors. So what I recommend is go ahead and take a, a magic marker and color your tape on your bowl would make it make it black and do that all the way around because bed bugs are more likely to ascend an area where it's it's black or red now you may you may be wondering why is that why do they have a preference for black or red well let's let's think about the blood the uh, bed bug to begin with the family uh Semitisei is is the family of bed bugs there are 88 species of bed bugs in the world only three of them will feed on human and one in particular specializes on just human. In fact, uh, Cmex lecturialis, the one that we are trying to defeat, will pass over rodents and rats and other birds to get to a human. So they're not just detecting the CO2. They're detecting pheromones and they're detecting heat. But this is a quick way to determine whether or not you have bed bugs in your home. So I look at it almost as a detection unit as much as, as a pitfall to kill bed bugs. Now let me tell you about a study. Um, this whole process, by the way, comes from uh, a, a professor at Rutgers University, an entomologist that I deeply respect. His name is Chang Lo Wang. And what Dr. Wang found out is uh, when he started, probably about 10 years ago, he was building uh, yeast and sugar and water in massive kits. They were in uh, big vats of them to, for, for warehouses, for poultry plants. So he was doing it on an industrial scale. My uh, innovation, I guess you would say, is me and a colleague uh, that lives in Canada, we took that formula and shrunk it down and tried to put it into a container that people could put in their homes and it took off and that that's uh, why these videos are, are so successful on YouTube but the one of the things that Chang Lo Wang did in addition to that is he recently did a study probably about two or three years ago but they were trying to figure out why people didn't realize they had bed bugs in the first place what they did is a uh, Rutgers University is in New Jersey on the east coast of, of the United States and so they they took a survey and they basically went out into the field and they went to about 2400 different homes in low income housing and they searched for bed bugs. Um, out of the search they found about 12 percent of those homes that they searched had bed bugs and now here's the most interesting point of that study is almost 50 percent about 49 percent of the people that they in the homes that they found bed bugs were unaware that they had bed bugs. They did not know they had bed bugs. That's crazy, right? Let me say that again. 49% of the people's homes that they went in and they detected bed bugs, the, people, the residents there did not know they had bed bugs, right? Now there's two reasons for that. Um, let's talk about bed bug anatomy real quick. 
When the bed bug feeds on you, it's usually only on you for about 20 or 30 seconds, but it's very busy during that time. It's using its rostrum, this specialized mouth part here, that has two, basically, straws, basically two tubes inside of it. So when it punctures your skin, one of those tubes is injecting an anti, uh, uh, it's actually a, a vasodilator. It's, it's designed to keep the, promote the blood uh, flowing and, and keep it from clotting, to, to rapidly ex, you know, extract that blood from you quickly. The other uh, substance that it's injecting into you is an anesthetic. So it, it's basically deadening the area so that you won't feel the bed bug on you, right? So much like uh, if you've known people that have peanut allergies, right? Uh, there's a case, this happens a lot, where at, in schools where a person that has a very extreme reaction, a very strong allergen uh, to peanuts, uh, they could literally sit at a lunch table where a person had eaten uh, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich an hour before and left just a little bit of residue of that peanut on that table. That person with the hypersensitivity can sit at that table and literally go into shock, anaphylactic shock, where, where their throat starts closing up and they, make it very difficult for them to breathe. Now that's one extreme of a reaction to that allergen. On the very opposite of that spectrum are people who can get the injection from the bed bug, both the vasodilator substance and the anesthetic, and have no adverse reaction to it. So that's one reason that uh, people will have bed bugs in their home and not be aware of it. But I think the next reason is probably more likely. Uh, as you grow older, as you get older, your body's ability to fight uh, infection and, and, and basically uh, protect itself, its autoimmune system, your autoimmune system begins to weaken, begins to deteriorate. And you see this a lot in nursing homes where, where older people will be just, the, the room will be covered with bed bugs and, and their body does not have the characteristic wheels, the, the raised puffy areas, the red marks, the indicative signs that a person has been bitten by bed bugs. So it's very possible that as you get older, uh, you, you could be bitten by bed bugs and not even be aware of it. And so that's the reason why I tell you that is because I think that if you are suspecting, I get a lot of calls from people who say, uh, are they fleas? I got these bites, I'm not really sure what it is. This will tell you definitively in a very short period of time whether or not there are actually bed bugs in your home. Now let me explain something about uh, blood obligate insects. Now, uh, a cockroach, for example, is an, is an insect that can uh, feed from a variety of sources. A cockroach, if there's no food around, they can eat cardboard, they can even eat glue, they can even eat other um, uh, cockroaches. So a uh, cockroach is well equipped to, to stay alive using a variety of food sources. Blood obligate insects like bed bugs don't have that choice. As a matter of fact, their specialized mouth parts are only equipped to draw blood. So they have to get a blood meal from you or they die. In fact, they can't even transition into the next stage. There's, there's uh, five stages of a bed bug from, from, from the time that they're egg to a sexually mature adult. They can't even go through their molts uh, to get to the next stage unless they have a blood meal. So it's almost like when you put this out to them, they don't have a choice. If you're not home or you're at school or work, they don't have a choice. They, they smell that and they come running because they have to feed. And that's why this trap is so effective. So that's really what I wanted to say with, about that. I hope that you will take this idea, this, this concept, and disperse it widely. I want every poor person to know, or people of low, low income or moderate means, I want everyone to know that they probably have the tools and resources in their own home to number one, detect bed bug presence, and two, fight bed bug. In that study, going back to that uh, uh, study that Cheng Lo Wang did in, in New Jersey, he said that uh, they, they managed to capture over 1,300 bed bugs in just one of these traps. Now, I can't guarantee that your trap will be that successful, but the, the principle will remain steady. Okay, my name is Joel Z. Williams. People in my neighborhood call me the poor people's advocate. You will recognize me by my white hat, but you will know me by my good works. Thank you.